Hello and welcome to this video. Have you ever watched any of these videos or any other videos on QuickBooks and felt that the look and feel that what we're talking about is completely different to how you're experiencing your QuickBooks? Normally it's down to the fact you're using QuickBooks Self-Employed as opposed to QuickBooks Online. And they're actually fundamentally two different software solutions. We've done videos in the past of which one of those is right, which is the right one to be at for your business. Well, unfortunately, it's not this case that you can just simply click your fingers. Oh no, not again. Sorry about that. It's not a case that you can just click your fingers and you can move directly from QuickBooks Self-Employed to QuickBooks Online. There's no magic formula for this. So if you're looking to move from QuickBooks Self-Employed to QuickBooks Online, then you're gonna have to follow these simple steps. Also, stay tuned till the end of the video where we talk about an opportunity where you can actually automate this a lot more easier. Let's get into it. Hello, my name is Aaron Patrick. I'm a Chartered Accountant, Certified UK Trainer for Intuit, and also that QuickBooks chat. Now, as I said in the intro, a lot of people are looking or asking, how do I move from QuickBooks Self-Employed to QuickBooks Online? And if you notice any of my videos in the past, I've always said it's quite an important choice to make sure that you choose the right version of QuickBooks for your business. Now, there's two ways of moving between the software. The first one is if you choose to move dead on the date that you've decided that your year end is. So say your year end is 31st of March, if you choose to move over on the 1st of April, then go ahead. There's no real need for you or requirement for you to look at exporting any data or moving anything from one to another. The cleanest and simplest way at that point is for you just to start from scratch on your new QuickBooks license from the 1st of April and use the 31st of March as data to compile your tax return. Now stay tuned to this video because I'll show you how to download the data so you've got your own copy of it and so that you've got stuff in place when it comes to filing that tax return because not many people are going to file their tax return directly on the 31st of March. So if you've got a nice clean cutoff point, it's really straightforward. Don't worry about the data in the old version. Hopefully you're a sole trader and if you're a sole trader, there's no real benefit of worrying about what you're bringing forward from one period to the next. So start afresh from that new version of QuickBooks and you should be good. Now, if you do want to bring in some opening balances, then stay tuned to this video and we're going to talk about what that entails. Option two is bringing in open balances. What that means is you're looking to move QuickBooks during your tax year. And if you're looking to move from QuickBooks during your tax year, then you want to bring the data from the old software, QuickBooks Self-Employed, over to QuickBooks Online. So we're going to talk about now what data to bring over and how to do it. So let's have a look. Well, first of all, the key bit is to make sure that whatever data you bring in is correct. So you want to be doing sense check. You want to go through that data and make sure you're happy with it. Now, we've done lots of videos on how to look at data in QuickBooks Self-Employed, but here's some quick tips so you can remember. Number one, this area here. You should be happy that these bank accounts and credit card accounts and all these little transactions are accurate. And that's the amount of money you expect to see in your bank account. Number two, make sure there's no missing information. Now I find the easiest way to do that is use this little graph here. This little graph here tells you if you've got information in each individual month. Make sure that there's nothing missing. Make sure there's no big jumps and big losses and everything else like that, or at least stuff that you can't account for. You should be able to see this graph here and it should give you confidence that the information is in QuickBooks. Number three, make sure that there's no bank disconnection errors or anything like that. In front of me now is a pure example of something that's broken and hasn't been connected to QuickBooks. QuickBooks can't see that banking data. It's not going to be able to deal with it appropriately and deal with it accurately. So do make sure that that data has been put into QuickBooks correctly. Number four, have a quick look at your invoices. The invoices themselves should be a place where you can see if there's anything that's still outstanding. If you do still have outstanding transactions, then my advice is to use this little drop down arrow here, take a copy of it and use this spreadsheet to be able to see which ones are still open. That's what we're going to be calling your opening debtors going forward. And finally, speaking of opening debtors and opening transactions, 
do take notice of what these bank account transaction numbers are. They're going to be the numbers that we're going to be working towards. So use that as an opportunity to put that in. So as of this point, make a note of what those numbers are because we're going to be needing those numbers later. Okay, you've looked at your data, you've cleaned your data up, and now you're happy that everything has been included and that you have a nice clean set of data ready to move from QuickBooks Self-Employed to QuickBooks Online. Remember, your tax return or your management accounts or whatever reports you're ever going to generate in QuickBooks is only ever going to be as good as the data you've put in there. So if there's anything wrong with the data, it's always quicker and easier to clean it up now when you're comfortable with it because you've been using the software for a while before you move it over to the new software where not only have you got to learn how to use that new software, but you've also got to learn how to correct previous mistakes. So use this opportunity to make sure you're really comfortable, really happy with the data, and then you should be good to go. So the next step now is, well, what data am I going to import? Over on the right hand side, over on the left hand side, I would go to here and I would go to tax summary. I'd go to your report section, I'd go to tax details, I would make sure the right tax year is selected, so you can't select a particular period but you can select the right tax year and I'd press download. What that's going to do is generate the following, let's open it and find out. This file here should be basically a detailed breakdown of everything we're going to be bringing forward. So in here we've got our income, we've got our expenses broken into nice categories. Along the bottom here you've got all the details, so you've got a breakdown of what the income is made up of. You've got a breakdown of any other transactions that you've got in there, what your cost of sales are broken up of, any of the other categories that are there. And this will basically form the basis of your import data. One of the nice things you're going to find about moving from QuickBooks Self-Employed to QuickBooks Online, every time you do a transaction on QuickBooks Online, you get to attach documents to that transaction. Here's your first perfect example of a document worthwhile attaching. When I do opening balances for clients, I take these sort of records and I attach it directly to that transaction. Therefore, if I ever look back at that transaction or anyone else for that matter looks back at the transaction, they can see exactly where I got this data from. And if they need to make an adjustment or they want to query it or whatever the reason is going to be, they're going to have that information available to them. So use this as an opportunity to keep hold of that data and put it into QuickBooks. So I would also figure out saving this as the year end date or the date in which you're looking to import. The one downside about this data is that it's covering a whole period. It's not telling you what period it covers. So use that as an opportunity. And there we have it. There's the data that we need to get into QuickBooks Online. Now, to put that data in there, I've done a whole video on opening balances and how to tackle opening balances. So I'll make sure a link of that is included here. But stay tuned. So what we're going to release in a couple of weeks time on this channel is actually a spreadsheet that will work out all your opening balances for you. What we're developing is the ability for you to take the data you've just downloaded, being able to import it into one of our spreadsheets, and then use that spreadsheet to import it into QuickBooks Online. If that's something that you find is going to be useful, please, please, please like and like this video, comment down below, and that will push us to get it out sooner rather than later. But that's it. That's you taking the data from QuickBooks Self-Employed and then making sure that it's in a package that you can then start looking at putting opening balances together. Again, if you're used to putting opening balances, then either use the video I've got and then be able to go and do it yourself or stay tuned for the follow up video where we'll look at how to use our new file, <coughs> where I'll use our new spreadsheet to be able to convert the data that's in there and be able to bring it into something that you can use to be able to file, <coughs> to be able to generate your opening balances in QuickBooks Online. And that's it. That makes it really straightforward, doesn't it? As long as your data is clean, as long as your data is tidy, then actually exporting the data from QuickBooks Self-Employed is one of the most trickiest parts. Once you've got that figured out and you've found that right report that I've just shown you, then all you need to do then is put that data into QuickBooks and use that as a chance to go through and be able to put the information in the correct place. Hopefully this has been useful to you. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this video and that will give us the opportunity to make sure that we really do push to get that next follow-up video out as soon as possible. Also, comment below, is there a reason why you've been holding off from moving from QuickBooks Self-Employed to QuickBooks Online? Let me know, that could give me a really good content and topic to be able to bring to a future video 
coming down the line. My name's been Aaron Patrick. It's been an absolute pleasure to do this video for you. And if you need any more tips and advice like this, don't forget to like and subscribe. And no doubt I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. Cause I can get him out of my head I don't care what we do, everything's really new Even if we're staying bad My heart is saying yeah, 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 yeah You know I want him now, 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 now My heart is saying yeah, 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 yeah Hello and thank you for watching that video. What you may not know is this channel that you've watched this video from is part of a wider group. That wider group is called Apple Core Production. And the three channels that we have involved are as follows. Aaron Patrick, the QuickBooks Chat. Boffix Tax Tip. Finally, we have Apple Core Live and Geeky. All the links and everything are down below in the description. But it really mean a lot to us if you can go and give a like to the other channels as well.